All right guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and this is not a video I was expecting to make. However, when I recently got hands-on with the Acer Predator Orion X pre-built system and found out that not only does it have a custom-made RTX 4090, but it is actually liquid-cooled with a built-in radiator and pump, well, you just know I had to take a closer look. In today's video then, we are going to be taking this 4090 out of the Orion X and put it into our regular GPU test system and see how it compares against a range of RTX 4090s from more established brands. Definitely stick around for this one, as the results were not what I expected. First things first then, we do have to say this is really only a for science kind of video as you can't actually get this Acer 4090 standalone. The only way to get your hands on one is to buy it as part of the Predator Orion X pre-built. Even then, the Orion X isn't even available with a 4090 in the UK, you can only get it with a 4080. I just happened to get one of the international models when I was sent the pre-built a few weeks ago. All of that's just a way of me saying this isn't a review in the normal sense as we obviously can't offer any buying advice as you can't go out and buy this graphics card. All we want to find out in this video is how it compares against a range of other RTX 4090s and whether or not, in Acer's own words, this card ensures your system remains cool, efficient and quieter than non-liquid approaches. If we start then by taking a look at the card itself, I have to say the design overall is fairly low key. Acer is using a matte black shroud and that is made from plastic. There's a small Acer Predator logo printed in grey that sits between the two fans, but otherwise the shroud is fairly plain. Now it does feature RGB LEDs, but these are only controllable using the Predator Sense software on the Orion X system itself, so I couldn't control the RGB on my own PC. As for those two fans as well, these measure 100mm in diameter and after disassembling the cooler, we found that Acer is using Echotherm dual ball bearing fans. It's a relatively compact card as well, at least as far as RTX 4090s go. Now we don't have official dimensions, but as you can see here, the Acer 4090 is a couple of centimeters shorter than Nvidia's Founders Edition, though it's a similar height and still three slots thick. Acer's model is a touch lighter though, coming in at about 1.8 kilograms, compared to almost 2.2 kilograms for the Founders. Over on the front side, the shroud here is now a grey plastic and it houses the GeForce RTX logo. The backplate is made from metal though and it does feature a few cutouts to allow air to pass directly through the heatsink, though interestingly there's no dual BIOS switch on the card. Power is of course supplied by a single 12 volt high power connector and display outputs are entirely standard with three DisplayPort 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1. Where things get really interesting though, is when we take this card apart. Starting off with the PCB, it does look pretty similar to reference RTX 4090 designs, it's just a bit longer with more custom componentry at the end of the PCB for the card's RGB lighting. It's not a particularly high-end design though, comprising just 14 phases for the GPU, using 55 amp Alpha and Omega AOZ5311 NQI MOSFETs, and it's controlled by a UPI UP9512U. The memory VRM is four phase, again using the same 55 amp Alpha and Omega MOSFETs, but with a UPI UP9512R controller. The cooler though is easily the most interesting thing about the whole card as it's actually using liquid cooling via a pump and radiator that sit within the shroud itself. The GPU and memory contact a copper base plate with the liquid flowing beneath that contact plate and then through the radiator. The pump is built into the end of the radiator with a cable snaking out and that reports pump speed in GPU Z. The radiator itself measures approximately 270mm long, 116mm tall and it's 29mm thick. We can also see on the front side of the radiator that four smaller contact plates are used to cool the MOSFETs and VRM. There's no thermal pads on the back of the PCB however, so the metal backplate is not being used as a heat spreader, something which can make a small difference to memory thermals.
Clearly, this is a very unique GPU design. I've certainly never seen a graphics card quite like this, so it's time to find out how it performs. For that, we are of course using our regular GPU test system, which is provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built on Intel's i9-3900KS CPU, paired with the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX motherboard, and we've also got 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB memory, and of course that's DDR5. Just before we move on though, it is worth making clear that I have included all of our previous RTX 4090 comparison data in this video. Now, all of that data was collected when the 4090 first came out, so it's about a year old at this point, and in that time, we have since changed our GPU test system, so the data isn't directly apples to apples comparable. However, as we are using the exact same thermal test, which is a 30 minute loop in Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, I decided I was going to keep all of our thermal and noise data from the previous set of tests in today's video, just to provide some context to the results of this Acer 4090. I was also able to revalidate the 4090 Founders Edition, and I found that the thermals came in within one degree of the results that I previously showed, while the GPU also averaged just a nine megahertz difference in clock speed compared to my previous data. Of course, it's not a perfect scientific test as we have changed a key variable being the GPU test system. However, I do think the results are gonna be close enough as to still prove useful as part of this video. Just to be clear then, any data that has been grayed out, as you can see here, indicates that it is from our old test system with the Acer 4090 and the Founders Edition being more bold in color to indicate that they were tested on our current GPU platform. Starting off with the game benchmarks then, these are easily the least interesting part of the video, so we're just gonna get them out of the way now. With Asus 4090 sporting reference clocks with a boost of 2520 megahertz, it performs basically identically to the Founders Edition across the five games we tested. That's a good thing, but it can be simply summarized by saying this is an RTX 4090 that performs like an RTX 4090. Much more interesting data is to come. In terms of the long duration clock speed then, the Acer 4090 does run the slowest of any 4090 we have tested to date. It starts off by boosting as high as 2670 megahertz within the first two minutes of our stress test, but then it quickly settles at 2640 megahertz. On average then, it's only 40 megahertz slower than the Founders Edition, so we're not talking significant differences here, but the likes of the Inno3D X3 OC and the Asus Tough Gaming OC do run about 100 megahertz faster on average. Thermal performance, however, is where things get really interesting. Despite the unique liquid-cooled approach with the built-in radiator, the Acer 4090 actually proved to be the hottest running 4090 we have tested so far, with the GPU hitting just below 76 degrees and the hotspot at 85 degrees. Now, these results are still well within safe limits, but they are about 10 degrees hotter than a typical air-cooled card, such as Palette's 4090 Game Rock OC, while MSI's Supreme Liquid X shows what a 4090 using an external 240mm radiator is capable of. Memory thermals are even worse, with the Acer sitting at the top of the chart by some distance. This was pretty surprising to me at first, but coupled with the lackluster GPU thermals, the numbers shown do indicate that the overall cooling setup is just not adequate for a 450 watt RTX 4090. Upon disassembling the card, we did note that the memory modules don't contact the main area of the copper base plate, and instead that area juts out a fair distance from the main body of the cooling plate. Acer is using relatively thick 3mm thermal pads too, which don't look like they make amazing contact with those memory modules, nor are there any thermal pads on the back of the PCB to draw out heat from the underside of the memory. We also have to remember that this is just a dual fan card when most 4090s are triple fan. Of course, it's hard to say just how much of a difference all of these factors make individually, or whether or not the compact radiator just does not provide enough cooling power for this 4090, but the results are clear to see. Adding salt to the wound then is the fact that the 200mm fans do run at quite a pace to cool the GPU and memory. We saw them hit 65% fan speed, which is just under 2000 RPM, generating 44 decibels of noise. That makes the Acer 4090 noticeably louder than even Nvidia's Founders Edition, while it is a far cry from the likes of the Tough Gaming or Game Rock OC. 
Moving on then, I had to reduce fan speed to 52% or 1630 RPM for noise levels to hit 40 decibels, where we then retested thermal performance at this noise normalized figure. As expected, things got quite a bit worse due to the slower fan speed, with the GPU now peaking just below 84 degrees, with the hotspot at almost 94 degrees. This again makes the Acer model the worst performing 4090 we have tested. Noise normalized memory thermals were even worse, running as hot as 106 Celsius during our 30 minute stress test. Now, it's not been overly clear in the past how hot GDDR6X is specified to run, though these particular Micron chips are listed at 95 degrees on the product page, so 106 degrees is clearly well over that figure. In fact, we actually observed some thermal throttling when running our noise normalized stress test. We observed several significant dips in both the total board power draw and the GPU clock speed in the latter half of our test, as you can see from this chart here. GPU-Z's handy perf cap reason also indicates that thermals are to blame for this, as identified by the magenta sections of the otherwise green bar. This simply means that the Acer 4090 is just not able to run at 40 decibels without significant issues, further hurting its viability as a standalone product. Moving on though, it's time to take a quick look at overclocking and interestingly, Acer has actually limited the power limit to 100%, so it can't be raised above the 450 watt reference figure. My best result then came with an extra 205 megahertz added to the GPU core and 1475 megahertz added to the memory. This saw the Acer 4090's real-world clock speed increase by almost 170 MHz, now averaging 2810 MHz over our 30-minute stress test. That overclock, though, didn't net us any particularly inspiring gains, with just an extra 2-6% to performance boosts on offer in the three titles we retested, so it's hardly worth doing. So that brings us to the end of this video and I have to say it has been a very interesting time testing out this Acer 4090. Unfortunately for Acer it's been interesting for all the wrong reasons but hopefully it's still made for an entertaining video. As we saw then this liquid cooled Acer 4090 just does not compare well to any of the other 4090s we have tested so far. It simply runs both hotter and louder with particularly poor memory thermals and it even thermal throttled when we noise normalized to 40 decibels. Now I did mention a few possible contributing factors to the overall poor performance earlier in the video, including the fact that the memory thermal pads are relatively thick at three millimeters and they don't appear to make great contact with the memory modules. And there's also the possible design of the copper cold plate itself. However, I'm just not sure if a radiator this small that's actually built into the shroud of the graphics card itself actually provides enough cooling power for a 450 watt RTX 4090. It certainly is a cool idea on paper and I can imagine for Acer it's a great way of creating a marketing buzz saying that they've got a liquid cooled 4090 in a pre-built system that's as small as the Predator Orion X. Unfortunately though the execution just isn't there and perhaps it's a good thing that you can't actually go out and buy this GPU standalone as if you could we certainly wouldn't recommend it. That is going to do it for this video though guys so if you liked it please do toss me a thumbs up and as always let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell so you don't miss out when we upload a new video and why not come carry on the conversation with us in our discord server which is linked down in the description. While you're there, you will also find a link to our merch store where you can pick up a cool t-shirt like one of these on screen now. And if you're feeling particularly generous, you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That is it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic for Kick Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.